Hello students. In the previous lecture, we have learned about isostructural minerals. The example for which we have given are calcite group of minerals. But now let's talk about polymorphism. So the ability of a chemical compound to crystallize with more than one structure as a function of changes in either temperature or pressure or both is known as polymorphism. The term polymorphism is derived from a Greek word having the meaning of many forms. The different structures of a given chemical compound are known as polymorphic forms or polymorphs. And the set of different minerals with the same chemical composition is known as polymorphic group. At a given temperature and pressure, one structure may represent the lowest energy configuration and the other temperature and pressure a different structure may be more stable. High temperatures favor structures in which the atoms and ions are more tightly packed reflected in higher mineral stability. So high pressure that leads to higher mineral density. High temperature favor more open and lower density structures and the structures that allow greater diversity in the occupancy of specific structural sites. Because different polymorphs of the same substances are stable under different set of conditions, the presence of a given polymorph in a rock may indicate something about the condition under which the rock was formed or which it has been subjected to during the formation process. Here I have shown a stability relationship of SiO2 polymorphs which are named as different terms. So in the x-axis you can see that pressure is shown in kilobars and in the y-axis what we have shown is the temperature in degree Celsius. From this you can easily make out the low temperature high pressure polymorph of silica that is SiO2 or quartz is stichoid. The intermediate pressure temperature variety of silica is soicide. Whereas the low temperature and low pressure variety of quartz is we call it as low quartz and the high temperature low pressure silica is termed as tridimide and cristobalite. So these are different examples for polymorph as a function of the pressure and temperature. There are different types of polymorphism. Four different structural relationships between polymorphic forms are named as reconstructive polymorphism, displacive polymorphism, order disorder polymorphism, and polytypism. So when we consider the reconstructive polymorphism, conversion from one polymorph to other involves a major reorganization of the crystal structure. The chemical bonds that hold one structure together must be broken so that atoms or ions can be rearranged and bonded into a new structure. In reconstructive polymorphs, it need not have symmetry or structural elements in common, although the fact that uh, polymorphs have identical chemical composition and that may in turn lead to some structural similarities. The relationship between the two carbon polymorph is a typical example for reconstructive polymorphism. The examples though, uh, to those are basically diamond and graphite, both having the same composition carbon. Diamond has a structure in which each carbon atom is bonded with covalent sigma bonds to four neighboring carbon atoms forming extremely hard cubic or octahedral crystals. Whereas in graphite, each carbon atom is bonded to three neighbors using a combination of sigma and pi bonds to form continuous sheet that are bonded to each other with Van der Waals bonds. Crystals are typically very soft in case of graphite, which are black in color, opaque as hexagonal plates. Graphite is used to make the pencil lead for a, as a common use. 
The structure of diamond cannot be derived from graphite except by breaking the chemical bonds and then reassembling the carbon atoms in a completely different structures. Which means that whether you cool or heat up the mineral in different conditions, it will not spontaneously break down into one from other form. So it needs to be completely break down the chemical bonds and then reassemble it as carbon atoms. So diamond is stable only at pressures formed in the mantle and the graphite is generally stable at the earth's surface. The igneous rock known as kimberlite that you have already heard, this is the major source of diamond which are normally found, have its origin within the mantle. Diamond does not automatically convert to graphite on cooling because it takes a significant amount of energy to break the chemical bonds holding the carbon atoms together in diamond structure. The fact that diamond does not automatically convert to graphite reflects one of the important features of reconstructive polymorph, which means that it do not spontaneously convert from one mineral to other when it is exposed to a metastable condition. The reactions that can convert one polymorph to another are termed as quenchable reaction. Reconstructive polymorphs do not automatically convert from one structure to the other with a changing condition. Here a good example for different polymorphs of carbon as a function of pressure and temperature. As we have mentioned, graphites generally occur under earth surface condition whereas diamond occurs at higher pressure and high temperature condition which means that Diamond is a mineral that is generally formed in mantle condition whereas graphite can occur in low pressure and low temperature condition. These are some examples for crystal forms of diamond and graphite. The crystals are euhedral but are not perfect. The smallest drawing shows that the idealized structure of diamond and graphite. Now let's now let's talk about the second type of polymorphism is displacive polymorphism. Displacive polymorphism involves inversions that do not break in the chemical bonds. Dispersive polymorphic inversions do not involve breaking the chemical bonds. The difference between polymorphs is simply a distortion or bending of the crystal structure. The relation between alpha quartz and beta quartz is a good example. Both refers to quartz that are found at different pressure temperature condition. At one atmospheric pressure that you take uh, the pressure as a constant, the beta quartz which is also called as high quartz if you recall from the figure is stable above 573 degrees Celsius and has a structure consisting of framework of silicon tetrahedra that includes six-fold symmetry. On cooling below 573 degrees Celsius the structure undergoes an immediate unquenchable conversion. In our previous case, the conversion should have been quenchable, but here the conversion, the type of conversion is unquenchable and it is converted to alpha quartz, which is called low quartz, when it is cooled to a temperature less than 573 degree Celsius, and in which the spirals become distorted to assume a threefold symmetry. In case of high quartz that is beta quartz it was sixfold symmetry whereas in case of alpha quartz it has become threefold symmetry when the mineral was cooled to less than 573 degree Celsius. Every time the sample is heated or cooled through the inversion temperature the structure distorts from one structure to the other. The inversion is not quenchable as I have already mentioned. High temperature forms typically have higher symmetry than low temperature form. If you see the relation between the symmetry, the higher temperature minerals are characterized by higher symmetry than lower temperature polymorphs. The crystal shape of the high temperature polymorphs will be retained on inversion to the low temperature polymorph. Though the internal strains in the crystal lattice may lead to the formation of transformation twins. So that we will be uh, discussing 
later about the twin crystals and how they are formed. They are nothing but segments of crystal with different crystallographic orientation. Two or more crystals, they join together and form a new crystal. Now let's discuss about the third type of polymorphism that is order-disorder polymorphism. With the order disorder polymorphism, the mineral structure remains more or less same, but the change in the cation distribution within structural sites. If two cations X and Y can occupy two equivalent structural sites, that is A1 and A2, the structure is considered disordered if there is an equal probability of finding X in A1 or A2. So you take two cations that is x and y and having the equivalent structural sites a1 and a2 the structure is considered as disordered if there is an equal probability that the cations x can either go into a1 or a2 sites. If all x cations are located in site a1 and all y cations are in site a2 the structure is considered as fully ordered. So I will give you some example. The order disorder structure in potassium feldspar, the composition of which is KAL SI3O8. It's a polymorph of feldspar, potassium feldspar. Let's see how they would look in different condition. So the schematic view that shows two appointing, which means that the tetrahedra there are four tetrahedra shown in figure A. The upper two are pointing to the upper side, that is towards the observer. The lower two, which is represented by the dotted line, that is pointing away from the observer. So that means two up pointing and two down pointing tetrahedrons that contain three silica and one aluminium. Uh, if you refer to the formula of potassium feldspar, it is K, A, L, S, I, 3. So you just keep aside the potassium part. So in which there is one aluminium and three silica per unit formula. Two tetrahedron sites are T1 sites and two are T2 sites as shown in the figure. The high cyanidine, the aluminium is equally likely to be in any of the four sites. It can occupy any of the four sites. So on an average, if you divide one, one into four equal parts, then you will have 25 percentage of aluminium in four of those tetrahedra, which have the same probability to distribute among each of the T1 or T2 sites. So maximum microcline, on the other hand, aluminium is preferably placed in one of the tetrahedral sites, that is T1 site, and silica occupies the other three sites. This causes a distortion to the structure and reduces the symmetry from monoclinic to triclinic. So there are two cases we have discussed that is order disorder polymorphism with an example of potassium feldspar. The degree of order in most mineral is strongly influenced by crystallization temperature and cooling history. High temperature favors the crystallization with a high degree of disorder, low temperature favors order, which means that it gets longer time for the crystallization. Slow cooling allows time for ordering to occur, which means that on the other hand, rapid cooling prevents from the crystallographic ordering. Sanidine is found in volcanic rocks. Volcanic rocks are those rocks which are found on the surface of the earth, which means that they are subjected to sudden change in temperature when they are exposed to surface condition. So which combine high temperature and rapid cooling. So uh, in case of sanidine which is found in volcanic rocks, they are combined with having high temperature and rapid cooling which may show obvious disordered structure. Whereas potassium feldspar in plutonic igneous rock initially crystallizes as sanidine but slow cooling over the time allows ordering to occur. Deep seated intrusives usually have sufficiently slow cooling to allow extensive ordering so that it may contain mostly microcline, which is an ordered polymorph of potassium feldspar. Here are some examples of polymorphous mineral. You can see 
for carbon diamond and graphite is a polymorphic mineral the, the difference between diamond and graphite is diamond occurs as isometric mineral whereas graphite occurs in hexagonal system in case of iron sulfate that is fes2 two minerals having a polymorphous form that is pyrite and marcasite one in isometric system and another one is in orthorhombic system if you see that is calcium carbonate you have calcite and aragonite both are polymorphs of calcite you have rhombohedral system for calcite and orthorhombic system for aragonite if you consider silica you have good number of variety of polymorphous mineral they include low quartz high quartz and hydrodimide all the three found in hexagonal system low tridimide is found in orthorhombic system high cristobalite is found in isometric system highly ordered and low cristobalite they have slightly deformed to form a tetragonal symmetry and soisite and stishovite having monoclinic and tetragonal system respectively thank you